Welcome to Exploitation Reviews and me, Rob, and some family in the house today. Rashad is joining us, and today we're going to talk about Trick Baby, a black exploitation film from 1970. Ooh, I forgot to look that up. I want to say 72. It could be 73. 72? 72, yeah. 72, right on. So welcome, Rashad. It's great to talk to you again. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. It's always a pleasure to come here on the channel, chop it up with you, you know, so... Talking to uh, some uh, black exploitation here, one of my favorite subgenres. So uh, yeah, I'm ready to go, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. So Trick Baby. This is based on a novel by Iceberg Slim. Uh, Iceberg Slim was a a real life pimp back in the day, and when he got too old for the pimp in life, he became an author. <laughs> And uh, this is uh, one of the novels that he wrote that has been turned into uh, a movie. And um, well, you want to talk a little bit about the story? What, what's going on here? Uh, Trick Baby? Yeah, so these two hustlers, Blue and what do they call them? Um, not White people's, folks. Uh, what was his name? White folks. White folks, yeah, white folks. Yeah, so they, they got this hustle where uh, white folks is actually black, but passes for white. And Blue is like the older like mentor. So they go around and they hustle people, right? And right. they hustle the wrong people this time. And so now the adventure begins where they're on the run. Right. Out of all people you can rob, you mess with the mafia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so was it like he was like the uncle of the he was the uncle, yeah, yeah. Or, or something like this? Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they ripped him off. Uh, sold him some fake diamonds, and then mm -hmm. yeah, the stress of this you know caused the that uncle to have like a heart attack or something, right? Mm. And then the mafia. It's almost like is... robbing the Corleones, man. That's <laughs> yeah, bad news. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. And then they've also got some trouble with some other people in town too. There's this like corrupt cop who's on mm. them, um, and then also. Uh, there's another guy that hustles them, like, for protection or whatever in that bar, right. I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know what even he would be. Some sort of organized crime guy, right? Well, he was he was more of a fixer, so he was the guy oh, that... okay. Fixed, yeah, so he was the guy that fixed all their messes, and so his thing is, like, once he fixed the mess, yeah, I gotta eat too, so... Mm -hmm. They have to break him off, whatever they hustled. So if they hustled 10,000, okay, I need to see at least like 20% of that. Yeah, it was so he was the fixer same. guy, yeah. And yeah. um, and the cop, uh, the cop worked for the mafia, so that's how right. uh, the black cop was involved because he worked with them and they sent him to um, to uh, to uh, kill them. But mm -hmm. then the mafia, of course, didn't trust him, so now they had to send their goons to watch him going right. after them, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. Exactly, right, mm -hmm. right. And then, of course, because uh, the uh, white folks, well, white folks is the trick baby. So his mother right. was a prostitute and then his father was a John. That's why he's the, a trick baby. And um, yeah, and because he passes for white, a lot of the hustles that him and his like father figure blue right. uh, pool are based on based on the idea that he can pass for a white guy. Right. Yeah. Right. Which now brings me, well, are we going into our podcast? Yeah, so maybe? should we talk about what we liked about the movie? Or, yeah. or do you yeah. want to get into some criticisms? Um, well, the first thing I want to say, man, because this sticks out like a sore thumb, Rob. I, I have to address this first before anything else, because I feel like I'm going to explode if I don't talk about this. Because this, right, <laughs> this drove me crazy about the movie, man. Now, the movie did have <laughs> a lot of potential. Like, it had... You know, that this was an original story. And as a matter of fact, the opening of the movie, the first hustle they did, reminded me of uh, Mo Money. Remember, you remember the movie Mo Money with yeah. Dan Wayne's mm -hmm. and Marlon Wayne's where they hustled mm -hmm. the guy for the TV? Right. It was like ripped straight from that, you know what I'm saying? Or that ripped from from this movie. Yeah, this but is much older, drove, yeah. Right, right. But what drove me crazy is Trick Baby. Okay, the movie is called Trick Baby. That's the title of the film. Mm. White folks is Trick Baby. Why did it feel more like Blue's movie? It felt like Blue was the star. He was a standout. They gave him all the best lines. He had yeah. a couple of good monologue scenes mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm like, this, he's still in the movie here. And this other guy, 
no diss to the actor. I guess he did the best with what they gave him, but they didn't give him nothing. Right. I, I, yeah. I felt it would have been more compelling if, you know, okay, he's supposed to be uh, black passing for white. Can you at least, at least make him look somewhat believable as a half white person? Like, Robert, we know a lot of, you know, I know a lot of biracial people. You can see the black in him. Like, for example, right. uh, Imitation of Life, if you watch that movie, mm -hmm. Uh, um, the girl that's supposed to be black but passed for white, like she looks like she could be both. It was believable. Right. Yeah. This year, mm -hmm. all I saw was a white guy that they called black, and it was so bizarre. It, it took me out of the film. And the whole thing about movies is it's the illusion. They have to sell the if they can sell you on the illusion, right? Then they got you. Because yeah. I never bought the fact that he was a black dude. It took me out of the whole movie. It, it, it like at any moment I was expecting him to say the hard n word. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At any moment, because I never believed he was black. So right. I had to get that out now, man. I'm sorry. I had to rant about that real quick. Yeah, yeah I also think they could have done a bit better job with uh, the casting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because he's like a blue-eyed white guy, too. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing, then, nothing soulful about him, man. Like, yeah, at least he's got a little like, soul in your voice, you know? Right. Like, yeah, he's got no kink in his hair or anything. It's yeah, Nothing. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, and the actor is just a white dude. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah. And then even many of the characters in the movie, except for Blue, uh, mm -hmm. doubt that he is a black guy. Uh, right. Like Blue's girlfriend's like, I, I don't believe that he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And um, and what was I gonna say? Uh, and and I wish like they would have did. Okay, if you want to go there, let's go there. I thought it would have been more interesting, Rob, is if they would have showed how complex it is being a biracial child. You know what I mean? Right. So I've had biracial friends that, you know, that they, they, they go through the struggle of not being black enough for their black peers, but mm. then because they're half black, they're not really accepted by white people either. So right. yeah. I wish they would have got more into like the you know, the struggle. Of being mm -hmm. a biracial child, and they they never went there with that. They never swung for that, and right. I feel like it really yeah. brought the film down big time. Yeah, I, I also thought that was yeah a bit of a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah. right. I agree. Yeah, yeah. On on these points, we are agreed. Although I do think for what they gave him, uh, I think the acting in general in this film is really solid. I mean, especially yeah. for a lower budget film from the 70s i mean everyone is right. yeah uh, i have no acting complaints uh this this stuff that we're talking about here is more script problems Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah not not giving him yeah the right kind of um yeah not not the right kind of scenes to dig into the role much and probably poor casting as well yeah 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 i mean like i said it's called trick baby so i, I felt like it should have been more about him and his character, and I thought that would have been a more interesting story, mm. you know, aside from, like, like so the hustle aspect I thought was was great, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So they showed all the hustles, like, you could tell a pimp wrote this story, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it really yeah, goes yeah, yeah. into the street life. So the hustle stuff was great, but Re yeah, really story-wise, yeah. yeah, I just wish they would have leaned more to his character as opposed to Blue, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Blue was kind of interesting, too, but I'm like, no, this is called Trick. I, I came to see Trick, baby. I don't know <laughs> right, yeah. called Blue. You know, saying <laughs> I want more of that, but um, yeah, I'll agree. Yeah, the acting I thought was on point. Um, even the production, like compared to a lot of black exploitation movies at that time, the production and a lot of those movies are shit. Like yeah. you can see the boom microphone sometimes. You can see right. the wire from the camera. Right. You know what I mean? You can you can see the reflection of the crew sometimes in the background. So I thought the production here for a low budget movie was actually really good. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it and it took it took itself seriously. It kind of it kind of stands out from those other movies because it's not that typical shucking and jiving type movie. You know, say so it's right. an actual grounded street drama mm -hmm. that just happens yeah. to deal with the white dude that supposed to pass for black. We're supposed, supposed to believe it, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's really well put together on a technical level. Um, yeah, I really love the like the chase sequence when mm -hmm. uh, white folks uh, after he gets shot and there's that cool like chase sequence through the city. Right. Uh, that's like, yeah, there's some really like tense moments in there when he's trying to escape from like mm -hmm. the cop and stuff. 
Uh, and the music fits really well with what's going on. Um, yeah, it's quite well done. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, I, I tell you who else I didn't like in that movie either was a uh, uh, blues girlfriend. Um, who I don't know if you've seen the Fresh Prince of Bel Air back in the day, but that's yeah, Will yeah, Smith's sure. mom. Right, the Fresh yeah. Prince. I said, oh, I said that's uh, that's Vi from uh, Bel Air. <laughs> Hated her character. Now, yeah, now, as far yeah, as acting yeah. goes, yeah, she was probably the worst actor in the movie. You know, and, and I didn't like her character either because she right. was always just mad, always talking shit. And mm. I'm like, hey, like I'm not one to hit women, man. But in this case, Rob, I would make an exception, <laughs> man. Just, just a backhand. Yeah, I'll let one backhand go. Jesus, uh, like, like Chris Rock says, like I won't hit a woman, but I'll shake a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just, just one shake and then release. It has to be like a and then let go. You know, like put your like head that. on straight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> especially at the end, man, where she um, I mean, we're spoiling. I'm assuming, right? A, a little, yeah. We could do some slight spoilers. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. We, we should maybe this. not spoil everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, she she did some dry snitch shit where. She got a character messed up a little bit. I'm like, dude, mm. you, you, you know what you just did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah. this person might still be here if it wasn't for you. That, I think it's a more general criticism of the film is, I mean, there really aren't any good female characters in the movie. Not really. Because no. um, um, even like the one woman that white folks is kind of hooked up with, I right. mean, she's... I don't know, she comes across as like super needy. I mean, even after only knowing him for a couple of days, like, come on, like, yeah, pump the brakes, woman. Like, you just met this guy. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I mean, he seems pretty cool, but yeah, right. come on. <laughs> yeah, she was probably sprung, man. You know, she she, she made that noise. Yeah, 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 right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did love the, and I think it's one of the more famous uh, scenes in the movie when uh, she takes him to that dinner, yeah, and then the other like sort of like politicians and uh, you know sort of like captains of the industry are talking mm -hmm. about the you know how to properly handle the you know the black folks and then right. uh, the conservatives have an idea and the liberals have a different idea and both ideas are completely deplorable. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. Yeah, you know, you, the funny thing. Okay, funny story about that scene is that um, I seen that I watched that scene before I even seen the movie. So you know how mm. people have to like, they share the reels and stuff like that. So I would get like, you know, DMs or somebody would post it on Facebook or whatever. They would just show that clip of that meeting. Mm. And the first thing I always said is like, what is, where is that from? What is you that? Know, people yeah. in the comments like, what movie is that from? Like that, that's some deep shit. And mm. then, you know, then the name would come up Trick Baby. I was like, Trick Baby, that sounds like a black exploitation movie, which come to find out it was. Yeah, it but was. yeah, that, that was the first, that's the first scene that I've ever watched from that movie, that that one clip right there. And yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's the best scene of the movie, the realest scene in the movie, because it shows the hypocrisy on both sides. Right. Because the climate that we're in right now, you know, here in the US is that it's like Crips and Bloods out here, man. It's it's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, like yeah, you have hardcore wild. conservative right side, do you have hardcore liberal left side and it's like if you don't fall in between one of those you know what i'm saying it yeah it, it, it's yeah. rough man and, and they're, rough, they're at yeah. each other and this I, sometimes i feel like collateral damage because i, I don't fall <laughs> on either side like I, I i think for myself you know what i'm saying right. i mean i may have um morals that kind of fall on either side you know what i mean mm -hmm. like you know that there's, there's stuff that i agree with on both of them but like you sure. said at the core of it, like you say, it's deplorably like okay, that, that's that's too far. That's that's yeah. too much. That scene depicts where we're at right now. You know, it's right. scary. It's a scary thing because it is kind of, yeah, it is scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah especially yeah. As, a, as a person of color, neither side cares about you. So if you sit right. there and tell like, yes, that's right. I'm a I'm a right wing conservative. They mm. don't like you, man. No, they you don't know, like you. No, I'm a leftist. I'm a liberal. Like they don't like you either. <laughs> yeah, some of them don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of want to repost that scene. I, I kind of just want to put that on my social media. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. Check this out. Is, watch this scene. <laughs> <laughs> and that scene, like, I mean, if it was just a dinner conversation, it would have been a great scene. Uh, right. And then it goes right from that to white folks uh, hustling all those mm -hmm. people. And he does it in this really great way, you know, where right. he, uh, he, he really plays it well that he's not interested in doing business with them and he just mm -hmm. yeah he just ropes them right in like many of the other hustle scenes in the movie 
Yeah, it must be just a product of the sort of authenticity that uh, Iceberg Slim brought to the project. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Thanks. Actually, that has Iceberg Slim written all over it. I mean, I've never read his books, but just from hearing about him, I'm like, yeah, that definitely sounds like a pimp story. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. But man, how, how great would it have been seeing a scene like that, right? Where white folks is like, you know, swindling these guys, right? And then the next scene you see him, he's with Blue and just being a regular brother. You know what right. I'm saying? Just in, in, in full in full brother mode. Yeah. And then like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it would be cool if he was able to switch it off and on where both sides are believable, you know, so right. I think that would really elevated the film. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 That, that really is missing. Um, I mean, I think they tried to do it a little. Um, I mean, he has these small interactions, like he mm -hmm. sort of plays around with like the, uh, the kid he meets at the subway station, like with some play boxing and stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, he gives like a high five to some people he knows on the street or whatever, but mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not enough. I mean, there's no dialogue in these kinds of scenes to for him to really kind of show off that he fits into the community the way that he's supposed to. Right, right. That would be realistic. Yes, I know people like that for real. Where um, around white people, they have their they have their white voice. Right, and then when they're around, you know, black people, they talk a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Right. It's kind of mind blowing to me because I mean I, I I talk this way with everybody. I don't care who I'm around. <laughs> like, I'm just I'm I'm myself, you know, unapologetically. Right. But I do know people when they get around white folks is hey, hey, how are you today? <laughs> all right, are you, you're going bowling. Oh, that's great. That's <laughs> great. That's swell. All right, all right, all right. So uh yeah, man, I'll see you later. Okay. Uh tell your wife I said hi. And then wow. the seconds later come around us, hey, what's up, blood? <laughs> hey man hey, that, that's how you gotta play the game man you know <laughs> like no you don't have to play it like that <laughs> yeah you don't have to do that man just be no, yourself you, don't have you to know do that. <laughs> yeah yeah i, I yeah. know plenty of people like that yeah so i think that it would have came off better if you would have did that yeah. yeah 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 i agree yeah that would have elevated the film yeah mm -hmm. so i read this quote and a, re a review on i think imdb um which i think I agree with about this film. It says, uh, the quote was something like, uh, the film is uh, good enough that you want it to be better. And I think yeah. that's a pretty good assessment of the film because it is a good movie. I do like the movie. Like the hustle right. stuff is really cool. Right. Uh, the acting is great. Uh, it's filmed nicely. The editing is good. Uh, music's pretty solid. Um, right. But yeah, like if with a little bit of a tweak, it could have been something really yes. special. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and I think I think the film kind of suffers from pacing issues too. This is like an hour. It's like an hour and a half, but it feels longer than that because some scenes are just like drawn out too much. Mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe they could have cut that just a little bit. I I don't know. I guess because movies now are so faster paced. You right. know what I'm saying? If yeah. you watch all the stuff, the pacing is not so fast. You know that that was one mm -hmm. of Perez's problems with Claudine, he said that the movie was just like very slow. Mm. And it's, he said it bored the shit out of him, which yeah, was the 70s movies, they can drag. Yeah. Exactly. I like yeah, yeah. I love Claudine, you know, but um yeah. in this case, yeah, I think the the pacing could have been just a little better. You know, that's just mm. me nitpicking though. But I, yeah. I agree. I didn't I did enjoy the film for the most part. But that whole thing with white folks just kind of took me out a little bit though, right. you yeah. know, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. So uh Final thoughts about Trick Baby? Recommend? Don't recommend? What, what do you think? Should um, people I, check I this one out? I, re I recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the of the black exploitation genre. I, I think this is a must watch because, um, like I said earlier, it kind of separates itself from those a lot of the, a lot of those other movies because it's actually a serious film that you know a lot of what black exploitation films. A lot of them you laugh at, you know, saying you watch them just to have a good time with them, like the Rudy Ray uh, Rudy Ray Moore movies, for yeah. example. You know, love even those. Superfly, as much as I love Superfly, that movie is laughably bad. The production was just, ugh. Mm. But this one, good production, good performances, uh, does have a good story. Mm. Um, the hustling stuff really works for the film, so I'd, I recommend it. Yep, yep, I agree uh, with all those points. Yeah, it's a mm. very well put together film, uh, especially for the budget. Um, right, yeah, right. solid movie. Uh, I definitely think it's worth checking out. Um yeah, quality wise, it's a cut above quite a lot of what was coming out 
from the scene in the 70s. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. assuming um, we probably have to look it up, but I'm assuming the movie probably didn't do good at the box office just because there was a certain criteria for those type of films. And if it wasn't, you know, over the top, crazy, overly sexual, overly violent, mm. you know, saying people ain't going to come out in droves to see it, you know? Right. What I mean? So, right. All right. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, anything coming up on your channel you want to plug? Uh, yes. So um, I just shot a review today for Claudine with uh, my main man, Anthony A. Perez. So that video should be up in a couple of days. And also, I'm going to see a movie uh, tonight called 1992 with Tyrese. So um, I'm going to be having that review up probably first thing in the morning or probably later tonight, depending on how I'm feeling. And also, I've been reviewing the show Bel Air, which is, of course, is the dramatic version of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So I'm reviewing the last two episodes of that. And that is uh, about it that I got coming up for right now. That's a lot. Yeah. You're busy. Oh, yeah. 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 Which is good. That's a good problem. <laughs> <laughs> right that's a good problem right yeah cool well thank you again for joining me we'll definitely have to do this again sooner rather than later see you again soon yes sir peace